Hello everyone, I'm Guru Reddy and uh, I'm a, finally a grad student at uh, Kansas State University. Today I'll be talking about uh, using symbolic regression in Julia to find analytical functions to model low statistics. So before starting this talk, I would like to say that uh, uh, unlike the previous talks, this talk is from a user perspective and uh, I haven't contributed anything original to these packages. Okay, so in high energy physics, uh, it's often a problem that uh, the statistics become very low because uh, we uh, apply a lot of uh, selection criteria. And uh, this poses a problem because uh, the limits that we compute using this maximum likelihood techniques are not any more reliable. So one idea is to generate more events to tackle this problem, but that's not always a option. So we, what we can do is we can fit these low statistics with an analytical function and uh, extrapolate data points from that. But um, if, if you, any, I mean, some of you must have uh, experience with root and uh, we all know that it's not a straightforward thing. We need to start with an a priori function and then give it a initial parameters. And uh, that's not a straightforward task. And when you have many different kinds of shapes, this becomes an even bigger problem because it's too much time consuming. So the idea is to use symbolic regression to obtain this uh, fits and uh, proceed from there. So what is symbolic regression? So symbolic regression is a technique used by used in machine learning and uh, optimization. So what it does is that uh, it takes the data and uh, tries to find a function that best fits the data. So it, uh, describes the relationship between input variables and the output. So unlike uh, traditional regression techniques that uh, require you to give a, a predefined function, this uh, symbolic regression starts from a given pool of uh, operators and then builds function by itself. And to do so, it uh, uses optimization algorithms like genetic algorithm, which I'm going to discuss later to improve the fit. Now, what are gen uh, genetic algorithms? So genetic algorithms uh, mimic nature. So we all heard about this uh, survival of the fittest law in nature. So it takes uh, inspiration from that and uh, from a given pool of functions, which are analogous to genes, it selects a few of those genes and tries to make a function. And if the function is fit, um, the function survives and goes to the next step. So it reproduces and evolves into a better function. And if at any point the function is not fit, it just dies off, the branch dies there. And uh, this fitness is determined by a loss function that we can uh, predefine. So now coming to symbolic regression in Julia. So when I started doing my analysis, uh, I started with a function which was piecewise. So I used piecewise function to fit the uh, my data, I mean, my samples. And the problem there was that there were too many parameters in it. And uh, with every different shape, I need to vary the parameters. And sometimes if the initial parameters weren't proper, the fit flattened out. So it did not fit properly. So for this example, I'll show only the tail part that I used because it's simple. And um, I was playing with many packages, essentially. So before uh, coming across this uh, Julia package, I was looking at uh, this uh, Python packages like FastFX, GPLearn, PySR, and I played some time with Mathematica as well. And uh, they were tedious to work with. So then I came across this package, and uh, it's a good decision that I made. So here's the he, here's the small sample piece of code. and. Uh, here are the pool, wait, yeah. So here's the training range. The range varies from uh, 1048 to 3000 and uh, there are 300 data points in it. And uh, the training data is this function, this tail part of the piecewise function that I took. And uh, here you can see the pool of genes that I talked about. So I define, okay, these are the available features that I have, that is the addition, subtraction, and all this basic stuff. And also some operators like log exponential, and I also define some trigonometric functions just to make it more complex. And uh, here's the result. 
So this result shows only the branch that survived. So there were many branches before this that came in and uh, they weren't fit enough. So they died at some point. And this is the one that gave the best prediction. So I'm going to show you this. So it starts with a linear function. Um, you can see in the first one where the complexity is one, it's just a straight line. And uh, from there, it goes on to add extra features to it. So in the second line, you can see that there's an inverse function. So this is division. So when that was performed, you can see the loss, the, the loss becomes uh, less. So it's becoming fitter. So it remembers that. And on top of it, it adds this exponent. Then the loss reduces even more. So you can see that uh, fit here getting better. And uh, to the previous step, it also uh, combines this uh, subtraction in this next step and sees that, okay, this is also working fine. So it goes back again and combines both of them together like this exponent part and this subtraction and comes with this fit. So it uh, combines both these fits that are minimizing the loss in different ways and combines them and gets this one. So this process is repeated many times and the loss is reducing even further. And here you can see that after adding some trigonometric functions, it's getting even better. So higher the complexity, as I'm going down, the complexity is increasing and uh, it's causing the loss to become smaller and smaller. And that means the prediction is get, becoming better. So finally, you, you get a really good fit. Then from here, it's just fine tuning. Yep. So here's the, now I have my, now I have function that, fits my tail. And also there is this another program called PySR. This is a, this is a Python program that uses uh, this Julia backend. So this is much more easier to use. And this is the full data. So here uh, I give it the full function with uh, with Gaussian in the beginning. And uh, after the mean, it's just a modified log normal function. And uh, as you can see, it has too many parameters. And now I use this uh, model. And here I define, just like previously, I define a pool of uh, genes with uh, binary operators and unary operators. And I also define the complexity of each of these uh, operators. So what this essentially says is that uh, these are the weights. So addition has a weight of one, subtraction, these all have weight of one. And this complex ones like logarithm, exponential, they have a certainly uh, like certain um, larger weight. And also we can nest the constraints, for example, uh, how many logarithm functions can be inside a, uh, inside a, let's say a power function like that. So there are many options to play with in this. And we can also, we can also define a loss function. I gave a pretty simple one. So it's just a quadratic. So once we run this PSR program, this is what we get and yeah, Here's the final function that I found. It follows the same steps as previously. And uh, finally, I get this function for my entire fit. And uh, it's not a piecewise. It's a, it's a compact little function. And that can be generalized to this form. And with this, we can do our analytical fitting. OK, so once we have the fit, what can we do with this? So once we have the fit, uh, we can vary the parameters by one sigma up and down. and uh, generate nuisance parameters to feed into our uh, feed into our uh, Higgs combine or whatever method you're using. And uh, if you're worried that, okay, they might, the, the parameters might be correlated, what you can do is you can trace out the, like for example, in this uh, figure to the left, you can see this uh, red and green lines. Those are the, those are the envelopes created by changing this, uh, Envelopes created by changing these parameters, for example, this N, A, B, C, D, these uh, by changing this by one and two, sig uh, like plus or minus sigma, I get these envelopes. So what you can do is you can trace out these envelopes to the right extreme, to the left extreme, and to the up, uh, higher extreme and the lower extreme and call this up, down, right, left uh, systematics and use them instead if you, if you want. So in this way, you can get uh, better limits and yep, that's it. So these are the final thoughts. Symbolic regression can be used to identify a function 
like when you don't have any or if you have a function you can use this to start from there and uh, develop better functions or yeah to to develop better functions so that we can perform this f test and other uh, residual test to optimize the fit even further my only problem with this package was that you know um, i couldn't set the seed so uh, every time it gives a prediction that uh, the prediction was a little bit different so i couldn't reproduce that yeah that's my hope you find this helpful in your analysis